The God of Thunder makes his triumphant return to the MCU, and this time we get two Thors for the price of one. This is my review of Thor Love and Thunder. We find Thor on a journey of self-discovery that is soon interrupted by a galactic killer known as Gore the God Butcher, who seeks the extinction of the gods. To combat this threat, Thor enlists the help of King Valkyrie, Korg, and his ex-girlfriend Jane Foster, who inexplicably, to Thor's surprise, wields his magical hammer Mjolnir as the mighty Thor. Together, they embark on a harrowing cosmic adventure to uncover the mystery of the God Butcher's vengeance and stop him before it's too late. But before I start with my review of Thor Love and Thunder, I want you to start a conversation about it in the comments below. Let me know if you're excited for the film, if you've seen it, your thoughts on the previous Thor films, and I've reviewed every single Thor film ahead of Love and Thunder. You can find all those reviews right up here. And if you love the Thor movies, the MCU, movies and TV, this is the place to be. So consider clicking that subscribe button down there and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. As someone who was never the biggest fan of Thor Ragnarok, what I love most about Thor Love and Thunder is that it's through and through a Taika Waititi film. It features some terrific spectacle that we will talk about in a bit, but at its core, it carries that life-affirming heart that is so much Waititi's trademark. The film fully indulges in the emotional beats of the story that are at the hearts of these characters. Because at its core, Thor Love and Thunder is a beautiful love story between Thor and Jane Foster. It has rich themes of absent gods, our desire for love, our search for meaning and purpose, and of course, cherishing the presence. All enveloped in this beautiful love story with two characters that have never been better together on screen. By this point, Chris Hemsworth just absolutely owns the role of Thor. He is this character through and through. There's the machismo of this character, there's the cockiness, there's that bravado that we love, but there's a real fragility to him and his arc throughout this film that is a very welcome refresher from other aspects we've seen of this character. This is probably my favorite take on this character, having seen how much he's grown ever since his original solo film. And Natalie Portman makes a triumphant return as Jane Foster with a story that needs to be dealt with in a very delicate manner and Taika Waititi does that. There is real passion behind the performance, there is real chemistry bouncing between the two of them that just oozes off screen. The romance throughout this, the complicated romance is dealt with nuance but is dealt also with real passion. It feels real. It is electrifying to watch. It is so relatable. You feel every moment of it in every conversation that they have about love loss. There's the beautiful moment in a boat between these two where they're traveling the cosmic waves and it looks amazing in, the, in this fantastical realm, but the focus on these two is so well handled. Unlike Ragnarok, it doesn't keep the audience at an arm's length. It lets you sink in on the emotions and delivers epic, triumphant moments that serve these characters' journeys and really allows you to see their arcs fulfilled. It's funny, it's exciting, and it is resonant most importantly. It beautifully blends humor and heart like we know Taika Waititi is capable of and another element that carries a ton of emotional weight is Christian Bale's Gore the God Butcher who has cemented himself as a top tier MCU villain. He is absolutely terrifying. Every moment he is on screen feels like a nightmarish vision come to life. The use of shadows, just having his eyes glowing in the distance, his fiendish plan, he's like a ghoul straight out of hell, and Christian Bale is incredible 
in the role. And yet with all these qualities, Gore is still incredibly sympathetic. The film begins with Gore the God Butcher. It allows us to be somewhat on his side, to understand his plight. And I love how much of his story parallels that of Jane Foster, with these two brand new characters that carry so much of the emotion of this film in this beautiful sense of tragedy throughout. There are so much of the emotional wallop that you receive by the time the film ends. The emotional beauty of Thor Love and Thunder I don't think can be overstated. While it's probably the most fantastical of the Thor movies and deals with gods on the forefront it's dealing with all these fantastical elements fantastical locations powers and magic and all that it ends up being the most human story with the most human emotions that powerfully resonate throughout and deliver catharsis for all these characters and talking so much about the emotion the film delivers it's a film that by the end of it feels immensely cathartic it feels satisfying for the journeys that you've just witnessed these characters going through every bit of it feels earned and genuine and it goes crazy in the third act with its deep dive into the fantasy realm of the MCU of Marvel Comics that I didn't expect this film going to but it uses that to deliver a gut punch of an emotional wallop by the end. There will be tears my friends and it's a beautiful end, it's a beautiful through line of where these characters start this film at and how they end it and Taika Waititi delivered all of that with his trademark humor, his trademark heart. Its emotions are its priority. They carry the weight of the story. Not to say that the sense of humor of Taika Waititi isn't there, because it very much is. Once more, Taika Waititi delivers a fantastically fun film, fully diving into the fantasy aspect of Thor, Love and Thunder, and just has a blast with it. He makes sure that every character interaction, every shot, every location is brimming with color and excitement and is just electrifying. You're just never bored for a sec because visually this film is sensational. It's a delight to look at with all its fantastical locations and how they serve the story. The film spends most of its time on this journey to find Gore the God Butcher and all the locations that our characters visit are so unique to Taika ITD, but to this franchise within a bigger franchise in itself. And the action once more tops the previous film with unique stellar choreography and sensational visuals. Every action set piece in this film stands apart. Whether we're talking about the new Asgard set piece fighting off the Berserkers or near the third act, you've seen glimpses of this in the trailer where our heroes meet up with Gore the God Butcher and everything fades into black and white. There's just so much visual creativity when it comes to Taika Waititi directing this film. You can tell everyone is having a blast and there's just so much passion in the visual identity of this film. Also, I cannot keep talking about how fantastical, dynamic, fun, vibrant and colorful this film is where it feels like an awesome metal rock concert straight out from the 80s where the needle drops are incredible but Michael Giacchino's score is something out of this world. It's out now. Go listen to it. It's metal. It's epic. It's majestic. It has moments of contemplation in the movie's slowest, more intimate moments, but it's also rousing and allows for those epic triumphant moments to really hit emotionally. He does an incredible complex job with this score that just fits right in and makes his own mark as one of the best Thor scores. I might still prefer Patrick Doyle's score for the first Thor, but this one might edge it out on repeat viewings and repeat listenings. I was never bored as a fantasy fan, as a Thor fan. I love how he fully dives into the weird mystical side 
of the MCU. And of course, if I talk Taika Waititi style, I have to talk about his humor. And his humor in this film very much serves the story. It's much more character centric. It doesn't feel like these characters are being used as vehicles for a gag, for a joke. It very much serves who they are, their identities, and even their journeys and arcs throughout this film. Particularly, the big improvement for me is Korg, who is in this film from the beginning, he's there joining Thor in this journey, and he is very much out of his depth, but he's always there as kind of Thor's emissary. And that fits, that gives the film like a veneer of justifying Korg's presence and why he's so out of depth throughout this adventure. All the supporting characters just have great moments to shine. I've talked about Gore, I've talked about Jane, King Valkyrie has some really good moments on screen, and even Zeus, the scene in Olympus that we've seen a little bit of in the trailer, it goes on for a lot more time than I thought it would have, but it ends up serving a greater purpose than just this film. So stick around for those mid and post credit scene for which I will have an explained video about tomorrow. That scene is just really funny, but again, ends up serving a bigger purpose and also has some stellar action sequence. The Guardians of the Galaxy, they're not here for long, but they pave the way for the journey that Thor has to go through. They play a pivotal part thematically, they just don't occupy a bulk of the runtime, which to me ended up really serving the film. So the film focuses clearly on the right things, characters and fulfillment their arcs in a satisfying and cathartic manner along with the emotional beats that it has to deliver and it has to deliver a lot of them. My issue with the film, it may come across as a nitpick, but as much as I love Gore the God Butcher, as much as I love Thor, what it does with these two characters, their emotional journeys throughout this, I wish there was more of them on screen together. I wish you could have seen a little bit more of these two personalities bouncing off. There's a great line in the trailer. You are not like the other gods of kill. And that doesn't end up being in the film. So while whenever they're on screen together, the film really shines, I just wish there was more. There is enough Gore the God Butcher, there is enough Thor, there just isn't enough of the two of them together. But overall, I adored Thor Love and Thunder. It's a beautifully told love story about finding meaning and living in the moment, bursting with emotion and catharsis. A refined rock ballad told to the unique tempo of Taika Waititi that unashamedly wears its heart on its sleeve. I'm giving Thor Love and Thunder an A-. minus. Those are my thoughts on Thor, Love and Thunder, but I need you to start the conversation about it in the comments below. We're going to have a ton of Thor content, a spoiler review, post credit scenes explained, Thor movies ranked, and so much more. I hope to see you in all of those. Thank you so much for watching. Big thank you to my channel members for always supporting this channel. And until the next one, love each other and love the movies.